Well, welcome back to SV Just Dreaming. Um, going to do a little catching up for you. So, we've taken some time off. Quite frankly, after about a year and a half of working on this thing day and night, uh, we were pretty tired of it. So, uh, just been taking some downtime, really relaxing. Uh, been doing some work, uh, but uh, at a pretty slow pace. So it took a little time uh, to fly back home and enjoy some family time there and visit some friends. And now we're back at work. So I'm doing the editing on the video on rebuilding the starboard motor. And let me just pick up the camera here. So, that's what the uh, starboard motor room looks like. It's pretty well in pieces. And basically just taking my time and reconditioning each and every part, inspecting every part, uh, a lot of polishing, uh, sanding, cleaning, uh, really working on the internals of the motor at this point. Honing out the cylinders. Uh, cleaning the camshaft. I had a bad lobe on the camshaft, so I'll be covering I'll be covering that. But that's what we've been doing. So we'll uh, catch up and, and go through how to rebuild an uh, M20 uh, Perkins motor. There. Okay, this is a Perkins 103-06 M20 motor. It's also sold as a Volvo M2020. So we're starting to get her pulled apart. The first thing I wanted to do was pull the cylinder head, so I started taking the uh, exhaust manifold off and there it is with the exhaust manifold off. The thermostat housing is actually in the exhaust manifold, so not an easy reach to get to the uh, thermostat housing. Also, I thought I would find exhaust ports that were completely plugged. There's that thermostat. But uh, we really didn't find any exhaust ports that were plugged. Uh, so the exhaust manifold will need a minimal of just cleaning and decarbonize and everything will be fine. These are fuel injection lines and we're pulling off the fuel injection lines that go to the fuel injectors and also the bypass bleed. So dissecting all of that. Now we're getting to the valve cover. After I get the valve cover off, I had to pull the alternator and the water pump. The water pump is off at this point. There's uh, the head, the rocker arms and everything had to be pulled, pulled them as a unit. There's the cylinder walls. I wanted to look at those cylinder walls and order the rebuild kits before I left on vacation. So that's why I pulled the head before pulling the motor. Uh, the cylinder walls look good. Um, I thought the piston clearance looked okay. I really saw no issue where just going ahead and ordering a re-ring, rebuild kit with new bearings and basically uh, freshen it up and we should be good to go. It was a running motor uh, when I tore it down. So, And now we're lifting it out. Okay, let's see here. I went ahead and got the harmonic balancer pulled and the front timing cover off and the high pressure fuel injection pump off. Now the way I just explained it to you, um, 
that's actually backwards of how it goes. So you have this little lever uh, right here in the fuel injection pump. Now that's actually the throttle lever. It's also the shutoff for the motor. And down in here are some springs that control the throttle linkage and the automatic shutoff. And if you pull the timing cover, or try to pull the timing cover off first, before pulling the high pressure fuel injection pump, you're going to have a major problem because see where that cotter pin is right there? That's where the fuel injection pump linkage, or that's where the throttle linkage goes. And uh, so, you have to pull that pump off first before you pull this off. Save yourself a lot of trouble. Unfortunately, I did it wrong because I was just pulling things off and got in trouble but anyway now we're back on target okay when I pulled the motor out I noticed a little something here see that sheet metal screw sticking through the bottom of the damn oil pan honestly is that ridiculous or what who the hell would do something like that seriously anyway okay so where we're starting now is after I get my timing set on the timing gears I'm gonna come back here pull the transmission and the bell housing so that I can get to the rear seal and the crankshaft from behind so that I can flip this thing over and start working on it um, gotta figure out the timing on this motor and all the timing marks so when it goes back together it'll make sense I don't think I'll do any more disassembly till I completely understand the short block timing on this that's the very next thing okay so um, discussing timing see the two alignment marks right there that's the crank and that only goes on one way that's on uh, some sort of dowel or alignment dowel this is the idler and oil pump and up here is the camshaft okay now you see the alignment marks on the cam versus the idler and then the alignment marks on the main shaft versus the idler and you can turn it around one more revolution and nothing lines up so everything will have to go back to these positions and I really thought this was the number one cylinder but now I'm thinking that the back cylinder is number one so in this position the middle cylinder is down deep and the forward cylinder is about the halfway position and the number one is almost a top dead center almost well, here's a still shot of those timing marks now we have the crank out and the uh, of course the pistons are out a little bit of scoring some scoring on the main bearings and rod bearings but it all looks like it'll clean up okay after working for almost well i guess all week i think i've been on this one thing all week i had to make a special bushing puller this is the idler hub that i'm trying to pull so i made it out of a piece of aluminum that I got from Lowe's it's a it's like a, a leg for a post you know if you're gonna have like a post that you're gonna anchor to the concrete and then I kept breaking bolts and finally I got a grade 8 uh, half-inch bolt with fine threads 
and I grease the threads and so I'm trying to pull that bushing and it looks like after working on it for almost a week it's finally starting to come I have built I don't even know how many pullers and different puller configurations trying to figure this out but uh, okay well anyway it's coming out so there you go that's that's how you get the uh, oil hub uh, oil pump hub pulled this is working just got to be heavy duty enough after removing the old oil oil pump idler shaft which is this deal right here you see how it's offset it's not set in the center the shaft isn't so that has to be set exactly right so that the teeth on the oil pump will mesh perfectly with the teeth from the cam and the teeth from the crankshaft so I had to buy this tool 390 bucks from Perkins and this tool has an alignment pin this alignment pin is right here so you screw the alignment pin in and you put that over you put it over the alignment pin which is right there and over that you rotate the idler uh, shaft that's called an idler shaft for the oil pump idler shaft until it aligns then you take a hammer and you quite literally drive it into the block and the, and what you have to do is take periodic measurements and the way you do that is you take the old idler shaft which I had to pretty well destroy to get it out of there but I was able to build a special tool to get it out and you take your calipers and you measure this shiny area here which coincides with this shiny area here and until you have the same measurement out of the block so that line uh, determines where where it was set and once you have it exactly the right depth then you can proceed to put the motor back together by putting the gasket material on and the plates and start building it back back up from there okay so after I take the rings off and then I uh, use my buffing wheel to try to just so instead of using sandpaper or emery cloth I use a buffing wheel and some metal polish just to get the the carbon off of the sides of the pistons and then what I'm gonna have to do is very carefully clean out each of these grooves so that the piston rings will work correctly but uh, now I just finished using my buffing wheel here and then that's just some scotch bright now you can see what I have left to do but it's coming like I say I prefer not to reuse these pistons but I think that they really will be okay I measured them we're still within spec after I'm all done with this on the other two and then this will be the final one so it uh, takes a long time for each piston almost a day per piston to really get this clean and ready to reuse okay here's what we're doing today the uh, camshaft had a bad lobe so I took it to a welder and he welded it up and now I'm having to grind it down to give myself a nice smooth surface so I'm using my Dremel tool to knock off the big chunks and then uh, and then I'll be hand filing and then finally hand sanding in order to give myself the f fine finish that I need for this camshaft. This lobe by the way is for the fuel injection pump 
the number two cylinder, the middle cylinder. So because it was worn down, I believe that the uh, number two fuel injection pump, the high pressure pump, was not going full stroke. And that's probably another source of not achieving full RPM on this engine. So it should run up to about anywhere between 33 and 3600 RPM and I think when we shut it off I was barely able to get 2000 RPM out of the engine. So uh, when we're done it's gonna work great. Alright, I'm gonna set up my camera right over here. Let's see here. Uh, between nuts and bolts and things like that. There we go. Alright, so you see where I had it welded up and now I'm, I'm grinding and facing this down just a little bit at a time. It's just going to take some time. And with my shapes it really makes this a tough job. There's no room for error on this cam lobe. When I'm done, if it's not perfect, I'll have to have him weld it back up and redo it. I was lucky the, uh, the welder was just like two doors down. I could walk this piece over. You know, you don't think about things like that, but when you're in a strange port with no wheels, sometimes it'd be a little hard to get things over to a machine shop. A new camshaft would be, uh, oh, probably about a thousand bucks. I think it's uh, seven hundred and eighty dollars. Uh, well, uh, pounds, seven hundred and eighty pounds, which comes out to about a thousand bucks U.S. 